I'm Henry Gilliland, the Mechatronic Specialist with Electric Supply and Equipment. In this video, I'm going to explain the purpose of the MAJ instruction and show you how to properly implement it using ladder logic in Rockwell's Studio 5000 Logics Designer. But before we get going, please be sure to subscribe to es &E TV to view more videos like this one. The MAJ, or Motion Axis Jog instruction, is the integrated motion instruction that's used to move a given axis at a predefined speed for an unspecified amount of time. This means that when an MAJ is executed, the axis will ramp up and continue moving at the specified speed until it's commanded to do something else. Let's take a look at the different components of the instruction. First you have the axis field. This is where you will assign the axis that the instruction will target. Next, we have the motion control field. This is where a tag of type motion instruction will go. This is the tag that will be used by the processor to perform the functionality of the whole instruction. Next, there is the direction field. This is the field that will be used to define if the axis will move in the forward or reverse direction. Next, there is speed and speed units. These fields are used to specify the speed at which the axis will move. Then there is XL, XL units, D cell, and D cell units. These fields will allow you to adjust the rate at which the axis will ramp up to the target speed. If the axis is already moving, then the MAJ can be used to slow down the axis. Then the D cell fields will allow you to set how fast that slower speed will be reached. The profile and jerk fields allow you to control the XL and D cell ramp. By adjusting jerk, you can adjust the rate of change of acceleration. We'll discuss that further shortly. The merge and merge speed fields allow you to take over full control of the axis with this MAJ. If merge is enabled, then any other currently running motion instructions will be stopped and this MAJ will control the action of the axis going forward. Then there are four status indicator bits. None of these bits tell you anything about the current state of the target axis. They're only diagnostics associated with the given instruction. The EN or enable bit will be true when the rung that the instruction is on goes true. The DN or done bit will be true when the motion instruction executes successfully with no errors. The state of the done bit only updates when the enable bit transitions from false to true. The ER or error bit will be true when the motion instruction executes with errors. The state of the ER bit also only updates when the enable bit transitions from false to true. The IP or in process bit will be true while the instruction is currently running a task and has not yet finished. The MAJ has no predefined endpoint. This means that it will remain in process until another motion instruction stops it. Now let's build the instruction in ladder logic. You can find the MAJ instruction under the Motion Move tab of the Ladder Logic Instruction Selector. Assign the target axis, then create an instruction tag. It's a good idea to name the instruction tag after the instruction itself. That way, when troubleshooting in the future, it will be easier to find the tag. Now right-click on the label and select New in order to create the tag in the tag database. As mentioned earlier, the tag will be of type Motion Instruction. Select Create. Now we will need to fill in all the fields of the instruction. I find it helpful to start by selecting the units of each field first. It's important to note that the pre-configured scaling is set in the Scaling tab of the Axis Properties. In this case, the units are defined as degrees. Now we know that when an instruction says the word units, it means degrees for this particular application. Let's go back to the instruction. For speed units, I recommend selecting units per second. Again, in this case, this means degrees per second. For XL and D cell units, I recommend selecting units per second squared. For jerk units, I recommend selecting percent of time. In this example, we will not be using the merge or lock position functionality. 
When not using these fields, it's recommended to set the merge to disabled, the merge speed to current, the lock position to zero, and the lock direction to none. Now go back to the top and select the direction you would like the axis to move when the instruction is executed. Zero means forward and one means reverse. We will select forward for this example. Quick tip here. If you hover your mouse over the field you would like to edit, the bottom left hand corner of the logic designer will show a note that helps with the current field. In this case, it clearly tells us zero means forward and one means reverse. Now let's discuss how to define the dynamics of the move. Using a tool like Motion Analyzer Online is helpful here. There's a link to this free tool in the description below. For this example, I would like to run the servo at 360 degrees per second, and I'd like to reach full speed in exactly one second. Using an Excel profile, I can generate the information I need. Add the Excel slash Dcell profile, then select time velocity for the data entry permutation. This allows us to enter a time of one second and a speed of 360 degrees per second. It may be necessary to change the units from RPM to degrees per second. If you would like to add in S-curve, then simply apply a value in the jerk field. Entering 50% jerk means that the profile will use 50% of the move time to ramp the acceleration. However, with the jerk set to 50% of time, we can see that the acceleration now needs to be set to 480 degrees per second squared in order to reach the target speed in the same amount of time. It's generally a good idea to use jerk in all your moves. Adding jerk or S-curve, as it's sometimes called, puts less wear and tear on the mechanical system and allows for greater control over the moves. Now let's enter those calculated values into the MAJ fields. As we said, our target speed is 360 degrees per second. With the jerk set to 50% of time, the Excel rate needs to be 480 degrees per second squared. Because we're not using this MAJ to reduce the speed of an already running move, the D cell field here is meaningless. However, we still need to put a value in the field, so we can just use the same rate we used for Excel. For the profile field, select S-curve from the dropdown. This will activate the rest of the jerk fields for this instruction. If profile is set to trapezoidal, then the remaining jerk fields will be ignored. Now we can select the jerk rate we used in the profile calculations. Enter 50 for 50% 50 of time. As with decel rate, the decel jerk is unimportant for this particular move. So we can just match the XL jerk. Now your move should be completely filled out and ready for testing. We can now compile the code. In order to execute the instruction, the rung the instruction is on will need to transition from false to true. However, this instruction will only work properly if the target axis is not vaulted and is currently in the running state. You can use an MSO instruction to place the axis in the running state. Once the axis is in the correct state, we can toggle the bit on the rung. As you can see, when the rung is true, the enable bit is true. This instruction executed successfully, so you can see that the done bit is also true. You can also see that the in process bit is true. This means that the instruction is currently active and running the move profile on the target axis. The IP bit will stay on until another instruction is executed that stops this one. When the MAJ is executed, the motor being controlled by the target axis will ramp up to speed using the defined parameters until it reaches the target speed. When the target speed is reached, the motor will remain at the target speed indefinitely. Usually an MAS or motion axis stop instruction will be used to stop an MAJ. This MAS will need to be set to a stop type of all or a stop type of jog. Now you know the basics of how to properly use and configure the motion axis jog instruction. If you liked this video, please click the like button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when we post new videos. Thanks for watching.
move when the instruction is 